Hello, I'm James Sproul. I'm the Chief Economist for Handelsbank UK. Well, clearly we've never been in this situation before, and the coronavirus has really, really hit economies in a, in a huge number of ways. I think there's three big, big issues which are out there. The first is, um, and if we remember back to last autumn and what people were concerned about, they were really concerned about a US-China trade war. And even in the first part of the coronavirus, what we were worried about was the impact on supply chains and, and how businesses which operate just in time, how are they going to get the right bits and pieces in place at the right time to continue production? And that's clearly still an issue. We can look at some of the things coming through right now, and they're a bit better. It, it's improving. Um, it's got some way to go. But if that was the only problem we had, it would be a big problem, but a survivable one. But there's two other issues as well. The first is what's happened to consumer confidence. And consumers are worried about, naturally, they're worried about getting ill. Um, and they need to have confidence that they are able to go out and meet people and go to their offices and not get ill. And that's going to take time to come back. And then they're also worried about um, uh, unemployment. And we know from studying economic economies for a long time that when people are worried about losing their jobs, they just tend to stop spending money. And of course, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in terms of the economy turns down, therefore businesses start to lay people off because not enough people are spending money and it, it becomes a, a spiral downwards. Obviously, we're hoping to avoid that. And clearly, here in the UK, um, the Chancellor has been working as hard as he possibly can and spending prodigious sums of money to try to make sure consumers still feel good. But there's a third element there as well, and that's what happens with financial markets, and particularly for advanced economies such as the UK, um, where you've got a lot of people who, for instance, own their own home or own uh, reasonable amounts of um, financial assets. And if those assets decline in value, the impact upon people, upon their spending, is pretty bad, or it certainly can be pretty bad. And I think housing is the most critical one, because about two thirds of people in the UK own their own home. But you see that in France, you see that in the US, you see that in a lot of other countries as well. If you see a significant decline in um, house values, people feel poorer. And if they feel poorer, they tend to stop stop spending money so much. And then again, you can end up in a pretty bad situation. So. Um, there is a question as to how much this COVID is going to impact on those financial valuations as well. I think that there are, um, we in the UK have, have always, or for a long time, been the leaders in Europe in terms of online shopping. Clearly, this crisis has exacerbated that, and more people have moved to online shopping. People who might not have considered it before have now discovered, oh, it's quite easy. Oh, look, this, the stuff arrives at the door in a couple of days' time. Oh, this is, this is very, very good indeed. And so there's a wonderful phrase that said that the future is already with us, it's just not evenly distributed. And I think that's absolutely the case here. A lot of the trends that we're going to be seeing coming out in the next couple of years are things that we all can recognize have been there. It's just this has been a catalyst to pushing them on faster. And so you might say local high street might have been in trouble before. Well, it's going to be in that much more trouble now. And a lot of things come on from that. So, for instance, one of the things the Chancellor did very early on in the, in the crisis was to um, remove business rates. I, I, I don't personally see business rates ever coming back in the same form that we saw them as in January, December of last year, January of this year. I think that the government will use this as an opportunity to reform those business rates quite considerably. And I think that's a good thing because the high street will change and you need to make sure that you know, everything from the way that we shop but also the way the government taxes and raises that, that necessary tax revenue, that has to change too given the changing circumstances. If we look at commercial property, we've got a, a different set of circumstances going on there. First of all, uh, obviously with retail, there's a question as to how much consumers' spending habits have changed and how much have they been accelerated as a result of COVID-19. And therefore, do we see um, those rents being able to come back with the same uh, vigor that we saw before? So far, the, uh, the evidence is a bit mixed. On other types of, of um, office space, et cetera, like that, the, the demand for grade one office space, space so far, holding up reasonably well. Now, is that pent-up demand now being met, and is it going to continue on to the medium term? I think that in large depends upon how the economy as a whole goes, and that economy as a whole is dependent upon do consumers spend, which is itself dependent upon um, is there going to be a, a significant rise in unemployment. And if there, if there is a significant rise in unemployment, we can be certain that consumers will start, stop spending or slow their spending, and therefore the recovery will be more wobbly. Um, but if there isn't that, if you know, unemployment remains relatively subdued, um, I think we're looking at a situation where we can get a reasonable, a U-shaped recovery. People, the idea of a V-shaped recovery, I think, is a non-starter. Non a V-shaped, in my, mean, my mind, means no material loss for the economy as a whole, and that's not where we're headed at all. We, we will have had material loss.
Well, the UK government has clearly made a, a big deal about infrastructure, and um, you look at, can look at a number of things. We've got some big plans in, in, in train, uh, things like HS2, but I think even more importantly, and probably probably uh, going to be adding in uh, at least as much to the economic recovery are a number of things that have been announced more recently. So, for instance, the Chancellor's been very, very keen about the whole idea of free ports and uh, how do you, those, those are going depend, to be dependent on infrastructure, whether that be port infrastructure in terms of shipping or airport infrastructure, and then the, the whole infrastructure that goes around that. So that's clearly uh, an area which is, is going to be adding a lot. Uh, and the other big one, of course, is going to be um, rolling out uh, broadband. Now, we've, um, we've, we've had a situation in which we're having to rethink exactly who's going to be involved in the building out of that infrastructure, but there's still a great ambition to get people onto broadband across the country. So they all have super fast broadband uh, to their homes. And um, you know, if there was anything that was going to convince people that that was necessary, it would have been being locked in your home for several months at a time when your only means of communications was, in fact, that, that broadband. So I think that's going to be uh, clearly something that people really, really value. And it's, it's going to be, I think, a, a positive part for the UK as a whole of building up that that northern powerhouse that was something started by the last government, but uh, clearly being continued under this one as well. So we might see a, an HS3, which is a, across the north rail link, which I think would be particularly valuable. And and all of those, you know, there's there's both employment, and if you're looking to, to get that employment coming through, um, that clearly is. Uh, but it's, it's much more than that. It's about making the infrastructure pay as part of the long-term um, uh, economic infrastructure of the country as a whole. One of the things about looking at what happens as a result of, of, of a recession and when companies come out of a recession, they invariably do come out a bit leaner and stronger. And you often see, for instance, productivity leaps up and, as a result of a, a recession because companies have gone through and they've examined their books, they've examined themselves, all their spending in, in great detail, and they've said, here are the things we really need to concentrate on. And so they've, they've boiled themselves down and they've, they've gotten rid of some of that, whether you want to call it fat or whether you want to call it um, extraneous expenditure, they've, they've really concentrated on how do we make money? What's the most efficient things that we're really good at doing? Let's do that. And so you do see absolutely a boost to productivity, a boost to the company's profitability. Uh, it comes out they probably have a sm slightly smaller cost base as a result, result of that as well. So all those things are, are really quite good in terms of um, how the economy comes out. One of the other things we may well see is um, what are known as zombie companies, and that's companies that are uh, unable to amortize their debt. They can only just meet the interest payments. Well, of course, interest payments have been very, very low in the last few years, and therefore a lot of companies have been able to survive that in other downturns where interest rates have gone up, they might have actually gone into receivership. And that's meant that those companies have um, continued on, and they've probably been fairly low productivity, they've probably been fairly low profitability. Um, and one has to wonder, um, you know, if you want the economy to be super efficient, are these the companies that can be part of that super efficient? Um, and the answer is probably not. And we may well see some more of those companies actually failing as a result of that. That's not great for those people, but the hope is, and, and with a degree of confidence, those people will quickly find new jobs in businesses that are better structured um, and have a better uh, outlook and potential for the future. I'm very optimistic about where we are going as an economy, where we're going as a society. Um, the, the, the number of, of things that are going on digitally, that the flexibility and agility in the UK economy, it gives me absolute confidence that we're going to be okay in the medium term. It's just between here and that medium term, we've got a few challenges. Will the UK economy look different in the 10 years? I, I mean, economies change rapidly all the time. Uh, there's a wonderful thing that they do at Davos, and they said whenever you want to look forward 10 years, 20 years, whatever, look back a similar number of years and see the amount of change that's happened over that period of time and realize the same amount of change, if not more, is going to be happening in future. So have things changed in the last decade? Well, quite clearly they have. I would expect that pace of change to continue to go on. And uh, There's been a lot of, of concern about you know, which countries are, are doing well, which societies are doing well. Um, much of that comes down to how agile your economy is. If, you, if you're agile, if you're willing to, to have people um, retraining and, and taking on new jobs and, and shifting careers halfway through their working life, that's the sort of thing that's going to be absolutely necessary. We're pretty good at that in the UK. And therefore, I think that whilst um, the, the way in which the jobs in which people are involved in may well change, the prosperity of the UK is going to be one of those things that you look back and say, I'm still living in a pretty good place. I'm still um, able to enjoy a lot of, um, of pretty good things in my life.